Well, I put together some notes. I requested it from Bert. Oh, oh he said that he made a formal request. Of perhaps a pair of letters flying, flying around. Since around. Since we saw uh, the emails. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You got yeah. stuff from Rob? Did, did you have the foil, uh, actually? No. Rob, did you get your notes? Did you get your notes? Did you desire? Did you go on the bank? Did Mark get one? Yes. Did you get one? Yes. Since we're giving out stuff here. Holiday season, you know. Yeah, it's kind of giving, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I came up with. So 80, this is a page of the zoning code for yes. 83. I couldn't find that. I couldn't find the score. We're trying to make it as simple as possible. You know, I think us just bickering over the same issues all the time and getting us nowhere. You know, we kind of like just keep going around in this big circle. And it well, slows up at times, and then we get started again, and it starts spinning faster. Well, one of the things we've done is define the issues. Yeah, well, I do yeah. a lot of research in the book. Yeah, I appreciate that. You got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Um, yeah, look at the page. Page. It's, it's all online. I mean, I have yeah. online, but I'm not so computer literate, so I was able to obtain a copy. So. so I did a lot of research about these so issues that we said I'd try to see what could be reinforced in the in the zoning code. I can talk about that. Hey, James. So, we have a whole set of problems. James, have you moved your problem? You. Property maintenance code. Oh, yeah. Part of the international <laughs> building. Yeah, yeah, which I didn't get into that. I missed no. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> only a little thin book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. Okay. I just got into our zoning. Right. Oh, right. right. See, you know, what applies to the zoning. We just go over to the email. Kind of quickly get printed. Print mm -hmm. And what you said in the beginning is really good. Definition is in is in um, it, it's it's not an actual definition that the town is going to adopt yet because they've got to look at it, agree with it, and maybe they want to change it. Yeah, I thought we simplified it. Right? Well, well no, there's no so. there's no <laughs> days in it, so I think a lot of a lot of people that looking at short term yeah. rentals want to yes. see a number. The first committee spent a whole bunch of time putting together the definition, yeah. but we ended up with just very simple. 30 days furnished apartment, 30 days yeah. or less. We when talked about that and we said we didn't want to contradict the town. That's why we didn't do it. Because we did, we talked about the number of days. Yeah, and, yeah, no. and it was agreed that, well, the county says it's it's not permanent. So they, we just decided, at the time, doesn't mean we can't yeah, contradict it. No, no, it makes sense. sense. I mean, at the we time, we said we don't want to contradict yeah. the county. Because right. you'll have, well, in the town of Sendakin, I'm not a short term rental, but in the county of Ulster, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some confusion. It's going to be, yeah. So I make it vague enough that it was had a big enough umbrella, but specific enough that it had a short enough umbrella. Now, so as soon as you put it for 30, everyone's going to rent it. 31 days, I'm exempt, I'm not an SDR. Yeah, exactly. So we're in ski rentals and so on, like doing that. So everybody's here. Can we start the meeting? Mm -hmm. Prepared, sir? Yeah. 
Yeah, so right. look, we'll have, we don't have last month's, uh, then you want to read the last month's note, yeah. notes? Um, which I don't have. I don't have I, have I haven't, but I mean, does it, has everybody read them? Yeah, do we I need to read them? You have not? Just have not Would you like to read them? No, no, sure. I, I can't. I'm, I'm, uh, um, I can read for you if you like. Yeah, yeah. I somehow misplaced my folder. I read ten I minutes. I mean, they're pretty. Hey, I can. I can hey, start. Yeah. <coughs> issues that we felt needed to be addressed with STR licensing uh, regulations. How he was on site parking, fire and safety, occupancy based on bedrooms, property insurance, garbage. Mark was economic health of the community, safety, uh, smoke, CO2, building codes, parking, garbage removal, resident host manager, density limits, how do we convey restrictions, rules to guests, licensing, garbage, taxation, uh, so the so STR hosts, taxation of STR hosts. And then we asked Ralph what, what he paid, and he gave us some information on his 8% sales and 2% occupancy tax. Uh, James distributed a statement reflecting the views of Chris and him regarding important issues to address, and the sample registration form, which I thought was excellent, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, and no caps on the number of days. We, we can go over this over. No caps on the number of days rent. Uh, property regis uh, there's a registration, a licensing issue with the fee. Uh, all those verify uh, certain safety features during registration, proof of insurance, verify legal parking. Uh, if there are issues, neighbors can call the homeowners, I think, or Shandaken police. The town can determine how many verified complaints, constitute a property conditions registration, blah, blah, blah. So that's all stuff we can talk about in the future, but um, I thought those are pretty good. <coughs> Hank distributed a document with his legal and regulatory considerations and made the following statements. Agreed that any SDRs have not checked with, in with zoning regulations, do not have a special permit. Before
before operating should be deemed illegal and be decided that given to stop operating order immediately by the town zoning officer until all paperwork is submitted and completed properly. Okay, that, uh, that, uh, must apply for the NCR application, have a certificate of occupancy, annual inspection certificate, proper insurance. Uh, new owners are not allowed to rent the property for uh, uh, as an SDR for 24 months. SDRs cannot be closer than 600 feet from each other. Two persons per bedroom limit, one space per bedroom, one parking space per bedroom. Uh, quiet hours, 9 a.m. 9 p.m. That, 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 that's some, a specific person uh, comment? Yeah, that was my yeah. sheet right. that I had given right. you. Okay. Right. We'll talk about that later. Thank you for that. Garbage cans must be removed in three 24 hours after pickup. Licenses will be suspended if you have not paid appropriate county or town taxes. Two verified complaints per year that license to operate <coughs> suspended for one year. Limit of 150 SDRs in Shank Bacon with a special use permit or license. Limit to the amount of SDRs by owner. And the Hague also distributed a sample SDR type designation and fees associated with that type. And some questions about that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and Sam's top concerns, again, community property rights, public health, safety and welfare, and quality of life, which was some of the very first discussions we had, you remember. And that's our four guiding lights that we're proceeding on the basis of everything else. And he submitted a matrix of how we look at these issues and how various types of SDRs affect these issues. Um, and you had uh, a few, um, you had three categories, home, homeowner occupied, home establishment, I think you piggybacking on the Woodstock. Exactly, where that's what I did that time, yeah. Uh, a, 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 a occupied dwelling unit with like an accessory unit, mm -hmm. but on the same property. And then establishment, meaning uh, it's being rented out by somebody not a resident, not on, uh, not on the property. So that has to be believed. I think, I think you said some slides up to two on your current. Yeah, I would think if the, if we listen to what other folks were saying, I have a different opinion. OK. So we're all, we're all. Yeah. Um, it was brought up by several members that many of the regulations that we would like the SDRs to abide by are rules that all the time <coughs> has in place. So it's a matter of making the SDRs clearly providing this information to the guests and creating town rules for SDRs uh, to post uh, what's discussed. And Kevin said most of the issues have been addressed, but his thoughts on regulations were limit a person to three SDRs. They could own more property, but no, only three could be SDRs. Uh, cap the number of SDRs in Chandake to 500. Okay, doing room for growth, but keeping it from uh, getting uncontrollable. And they require posting of town rules and regulations. Uh, we opened the meeting at, um, oh, the meeting to public co comments, three or four members of public attended, the meeting ended at 9 p.m., question by Kevin. Um, I think what was missing in here was that our final agreement was that we wanted to see what regs were already in the uh, zoning regs that would cover some of the things we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So that we could e either apply those existing zoning regs or pay piggyback. Is that correct? That was That's my understanding. Okay, so I did that. Good. Um, so, zoning regs are available online somewhere? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. the the website. I think it's there. Is it? Is it? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I don't know yeah, so I think patterns emerged, like we did agree upon, um, I think all, all this rhetoric is agreed upon, some things that need to be addressed. And uh, the last thing that we discussed in the last meeting was those issues with parking, garbage, noise, uh, access for help safety and some kind of licensing. Does everybody agree with that? Is that correct? Anybody? <coughs> are you moving on from minutes? Yes. Three. Oh, we need we didn't accept. Yeah, well, uh, yes, we, 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 we're going to accept the minutes with your one exception on um, the missing item. Did yes. you sit? Yeah, I was suggesting an amendment that that I have placed in minutes. Okay, so uh, you're going to do, do your thing. Okay, so I make a motion that we accept the minutes with uh, my suggested amendment of uh, parsing the existing uh, zoning regs. So all in favor? Oh, uh, a second, please. A second, Kevin, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Uh, motion so passed. So, um, I, I think it'd be easy to start with the low hanging fruit. And I can tell you what I thought about the zoning regs. Um, maybe you found a little bit more than I did. Maybe, no, anyway. yeah. Anybody can help me with this. I have most of this. Let me go over this and maybe you can help. Uh, so let's start with parking. 
Now, first of all, I want to remind people that the Donna and Greggs were conceived in 1974, actually, Nancy and Ron in 1977. Is that the year? 76, 77? 74, I believe. 74, 76. Uh, way before uh, short term rentals, way before the internet, way before smartphones, way before maybe some of us were born. I will hold that against you. Uh, so there are never any amendments to this? Yes, there are. Oh, yeah. There are constant amendments. Oh, right. Well, not constant. There are occasional amendments. Um, so parking would seem to be an easy one. Let's start with that. We need enough spaces as we think this many cars are going to show up, right? So um, let's see what the code has to say here. Right here. One family this is, residence. Uh, it's it's huh? Yours is incorrect, Hank. It is? It is. You have boarding houses that are one and a half per bedroom, and you've admitted multi-family? Multi-family No, I didn't put them all in. I just oh. put a few in. With boarding house requires one per bedroom, yeah, I, not I, one and a half per bedroom. I just put a few in to, uh, and I didn't put them all in. I mean, just to give you an indication that they're in the book. Right. Yeah. I was just correcting that you put boarding house in as one and a half per bedroom. A boarding house, according to the code, requires one. There are other issues that require one and a half per bedroom. So Multi families yeah. require, yeah. Okay, it gets complex. It is. First of all, okay, Reg 116 24 parking and, and loading standards, uh, and this is in the zoning code. Uh, I'm just going to read this paragraph. In all districts, at the time any new building or structure is erected, any existing building or structure is enlarged, or any new or changed use of either land or structure is established. Off-street parking and loading space shall be provided in accordance with the minimum standards set forth. So that would indicate if you're building a new structure or renovating a structure, these, these regs apply. The second paragraph is required number of off-street parking spaces. The minimum, minimum number of parking spaces stated below shall be required in addition to one parking space for each company vehicle associated with commercial business or like that they use. In other words, one space for each contractor or whatever. It then goes on to the <coughs> number of spaces required. So by this reading, does that mean that these parking rates are only enforced when you're building new construction or renovating? I'd say no. Well, or change of use. Change of use, exactly. So if you're not doing a change of use, then, you, then these parking rates don't apply? No. So uh, no, if you're uh, building a new structure, yeah. Or if you are going through a change of use, then these rules would apply. I'm building a new anything, structure. Anything before 1974 is non-conforming pre-existing. So if you only mean, had one space, you can't, I can't go make you put it in another park. Right, in. which is many, many new properties. <laughs> is converting so, a residence, is, is that a change of use? This is my house, I'm now going to be an SDR? Is that a change of use? Yes, or is it still a residential? Yes, okay, that's a change so then, of use. Yes. So I would say yes, then those standards do apply. Okay, so then I've, I've completed my change of use, I've built my house. Now I uh, don't have any parking rigs, so I'm You know, uh, to have any kind of an accessory apartment in the town, you have to get a special use permit. That's in every district. There are, uh, okay, so continuing here. I'm, so that's. Frankly, if, if I'm on the zoning board, if somebody asks me to rule on this rig, I'm going to assume that the requirement of a single family dwelling <coughs> requires two spaces is a permanent rig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That may be challenging. Uh, so that's the reg. A single family dwelling, the space required is two parking spaces. Uh, two family dwelling is four spaces. Multi family is 1.5 per dwelling. But boarding or rooming house or similar uses, that would seem to apply to us, right? Yeah. Is one per guest room plus required spaces for occupants of other dwelling units on premise. Okay. Read that again. Yeah, so that's, that's the confusing. Last part. Boarding or rooming <coughs> house or similar use, one per guest room plus required spaces for occupants of other dwelling units on premise. So only if there's other units. Well, if there's a single family dwelling, for example. Yeah. So I was hoping Krista would be here. Let's take her as an example. She has a single family dwelling unit, which her and her husband live in, requiring two spaces. Uh, she has a... Uh, requiring two spaces. Two yeah. spaces for the main house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah. And then she has a, uh, an accessory structure that would require one per guest room. I think that's one. I think it's a one bedroom. Okay, so she needs three spaces, mm -hmm. right? According to how I would interpret that. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. I'm doing my late night uh, leisure meeting, <laughs> and I happen to come across.
So an accessory park, so this is under the um, uh, special permit regs. Mm -hmm. An accessory apartment within an existing, that's not even right, it would be an accessory dwelling located within a separate structure from a principal residence with a new existing in R5, R3, R1.5, our district provided that, blah, blah, blah. Um, at least two parking spaces shall be available for the accessory dwelling in addition to the parking required for the principal dwelling. So sorry, Krista, you now need four spaces. So, <coughs> it's okay. Okay. Yeah. so like I was, I'm just using this example as I expected so with the rest of the- Why does it say that in a different place? If Krista, because it's under the special yes, permit right. regs. So if Krista was to apply for a special permit, now I remind you, the very first, one of the first or second meetings was on the uh, regs, and it was determined that if all, all the Airbnb people had applied for a special permit at the time, that they would have been legal. And then you recall we pulled, we parsed the zoning permits, and there were special like, permits for a hotel that applied to some of them, special only hotel applied to some of them, special only cottage, cabin, vacation rental, uh, but none of them really encompass uh, all the right. possible business models that they be. And that's why we did this, this special uh, definition. Okay. So, so we're back to three. So where are we going with Because this? Yeah. we don't know where we are, right? We, 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 we're, we're, so we're well, not go we did we decide not to do special use. That's why we decided to do the licensing. Uh, was it a licensing uh, or permit? Uh, I don't know if we agreed. It's been proposed by part of the group. That, that, well, that would be an alternative to doing the special use because the special use seemed to be cumbersome mm -hmm. from a well, well, wait, 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 wait. We're just talking about parking. Though. Yeah. So now, so now we're going off into different areas. Why can't we just say that if everybody's in agreement that the parking regulations dealing with single family, multifamily, boarding houses, uh, accessory buildings is already in the zoning code right. book and we don't have to deal with it because right. it addresses it. Okay. I'm not saying we need a special permit use. I'm pointing out that no, none of us have a special permit use. Right. It, okay. it was a special yeah, permit. These are the regs. I'm pointing out the conflict in the, uh, just in the regs in the parking, right. which you think would be pretty simple, right? right. So we're going to have to come up with our own suggestion based on what Walker okay. just told you. Yeah. Why? Which, what, uh, what is your suggestion for parking? My suggesting it, my suggestion is use exactly the parking regulations that the first one you read. First you know, that you run first of all, you, you're saying speed. that the parking changes only by one parking space for an accessory building if you, if you <coughs> require a special permit to that building. So, so that's the only real change, isn't it? Yeah, but I think it's a big change if you don't have the problem. Yeah, it's a huge change. I mean well, that's if you apply for a special, yeah, if, if an accessory building but needs a special permit, that, that would apply. But yeah. we've been talking about accessory buildings uh, on the same property that wouldn't require a special permit because the owner lives in the primary house. Yeah, that's what we're the talking about. giving us context in general. But we're going toward the licensing model, not the special permit right. model. Right. I'm just pointing out, we're piggybacking on special permit regs here. I don't think that we can leapfrog over the zoning codes. Yeah, I mean, we can't. We're just not going to come in and get, and get a, an application, fill it out, and you're going to get a STR. This book prevails, yeah. trumps that. Yeah, so, well, uh, but I, I think we're, we're agreeing that we're going to stick with the, what's in the regs, right? If I, if I yeah, yeah, that's what I think our homework yeah. was to try and figure out what is already in the zoning book so we yeah. don't have to deal with that in our, in our discussions and just get down to what really we need to either regulate or not regulate based on the book. But how you're saying this in terms of how these people will get permission to operate this business. Well, the process that? will be they'll have to take they'll have for a special use certificate. Yeah. Yeah. So what the license idea because, it's because the book says that the code in the town of Shandagan requires that. This is just because you didn't do it doesn't mean that it doesn't it's not required. This is a discussion we had the second or third yeah, meeting. We've had this a number of times. And and which goes nowhere. Really? No, it did go somewhere. I we, didn't we, go anywhere. Did we not agree that there should be a licensing? No. I mean, that was a strong yeah. consensus. Yes, yes. I, we agreed that to that, but you're not going to just come in and get a license. Yeah. And can can I read mine maybe you have to and get through this? Because in case I'm not feeling well, I have to leave. And then you yeah. guys can, because okay. I mean, but we can't even get past parking 
And to me, it's it's like ludicrous. Well, I'm more like we could be here for years and years. Well, no, I'm more like I'm more like a suggestion for parking. We think we need parking. Yes. You know, this is something for special. We're going to do it through the normal meeting that we're getting. No, that's not true. You were in the meeting more than he did, so. You know, I mean, so what you read, the special use permit, that parking regulation would apply. If you apply for a special permit. Yes. But, but. Are we asking people to apply for a special permit? We didn't we decide. I think we, we have to. to. I think we have to. But, but there are, how many as other, as it's written now, yes, yes, but as a group, we said, let's. Let's change Let's that. move beyond bureaucracy and go to a licensing. Well, I think you missed that meeting, actually. I might. But, but also, we're not setting laws here, we're setting recommendations. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, wait a minute. Well, in, in last meeting, when I presented that matrix, right. it did say licensing or special permits. Yeah. So, I mean, we didn't get past, yeah. I don't see, I don't we remember didn't say as a committee. Was a special permit. I, I, don't, I don't remember as a committee where we agreed that nobody needed a special permit that we were just going to get a licensing and, as you suggest, charge $25 and everybody's illegal. We didn't never, I don't, that's, I think that's we didn't agree to that. No, we said in lieu of uh, making yeah, that legal a special permit. Yeah. For okay. I think we said two things. We said that SDRs, that we would recommend that the zoning resolution be changed to show that an SDR use is permitted in all districts with the exception of floodway and yes. light industrial. And then, since it's permitted, it doesn't need a special permit anymore, we would then license the usage of a home for an SDR. We, we never said that it would be permitted, though. We didn't yeah, we, say we were going to put P's on it all. We said we'd put it in there, and then we would discuss whether it needed licenses or special permits, depending on, on the district. That's not my recollection. My recollection yeah, was we said that's not keep it simple, <laughs> make it legal, and then license it. Make, with the specific, so, the specific conversation I recall was we did not want this to become an ongoing matter in front of the planning board and the zoning board of appeals. Yes, that would be a, a misuse of their time. Well, it is a misuse of their time. If, that's the other part, yeah. If you look at it this way, you could you could set up some sort of accelerated program to get everybody that has uh, an SDR that actually needed the special permit in the beginning to operate. You could set up some sort of accelerated system for that. At least you know where they are and who they are. But to circumvent the zoning code book, just because somebody is capitalizing on, on a, a great tourist destination like Phoenicia in the town of Shandaken, uh, to me, it seems ludicrous because they did something that created business for them. And, and now they want to just change the zoning for the town of Shandaken to benefit them who is already being maybe unrichly benefited by what they're doing. I mean, I, I, I mean, if, if, if what you're saying is true, then we shouldn't even be here. We should just let the planning board do it, the zoning board, and just say, look, give them licenses. What, what's the point of all this? That's what I thought we said a couple of minutes ago. And how you made it the end. <coughs> so in addition to SDRs, are there other entities in the town of Shandaken that would therefore also require special use permits that are not doing that? Well, it depends on the, the district. The R5 right, may right. have some so, special so use permits. Yes. So, or so there are some. So, yeah, so, yeah. so my, here, here's, my, here's my point, and this is, I'm building on what Sam said. It's this issue of special use and is not just an SDR issue. There's a number of issues a number of organizations, entities, whatever you want to call them, in Shandaken that have not applied Shan this for the special use permit according to the code. If the town wants to take up that as an issue for both SDRs and the other entities mm -hmm. that should be doing special use, they can. What Sam uh, suggested and I supported was that let's not solve the town's issues, let's set up keeping it simple and moving forward for our recommendations, set up a simple licensing program that brings, believe, brings everybody into... That. I'm not for that. Do you remember so my licensing uh, program? <laughs> you think we should go through the special permit process? Yeah. Do you think it's required? Okay, I want to make, make clear, we're not suggesting we circumvent the zone, but we're suggesting we uh, yeah. add to the zone. I mean, did, they, you, my, did you read my statement on my last please, submission? Please, please, one at a time. And that's because we have a whole new cultural, economic, social situation that wasn't addressed in the zoning code. 
So we don't have the power to circumvent or rewrite. Yeah, we have so the power to suggest. By that, by what you're saying, then, is that anybody who wants to have an SDR in an apartment in their house just to, has to apply for a special use permit as well. It's a license. It's a license. It's a form of license. No, we want to make it an approved use. An SDR is happening inside but, but of, a, of a, a dwelling so that's a already been approved. So if I want to put in an apartment in my house for um, a disabled brother, um, I have to go through a special use permit. But if I call it a uh, SDR, I don't have to do that? No, we're, that's not what we're saying. We're saying the town has an issue with special use. If the town wants to go ahead and initiate that for all SDRs and any other entities in town that have not gone through special use and police that and track it down and do that, they should, God bless them, if that's what the town wants to do. There's, in other words, there's both SDRs and other entities in town that have not <coughs> followed the direction of special use permit. I don't know, I don't know where they get that information from. You just got, the, I said, are there other entities? Are there? Yes. And there you said be. that you thought there would be. There no. might be some that are under, you know, under the carpet, but uh, pretty much everybody who wants to subdivide their land is going to come in and apply for a special use permit. Well, they're going to call on the phone and say, you know, what do I need to do? And I'll say, well, you need to file for a special use permit. So, what about a, what about a, a home-based business? Somebody has an office in there. There's codes. Home. There's codes. Uh, home-based inside your house. You can, it. you know, you can build picture frames. You can. Yes. Yeah, so, so do, do you need a special use permit for that? For a home business, you do. Home bi business outside of your premises. Uh, okay. Class two home occupation occurring outside or within customary accessory structure or elsewhere on the residential practice. Special use permit in every district. It, it, it's required, right? Yep. So what? So my point is this: there are small businesses in the town of Chandigan. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised that every small business in Chandigan has applied for a special use. Maybe they have, and maybe, I, but I would like to be proved wrong. But my point that I'm making is, STR and other entities in town need to apply for special use permit. That's not the STR's responsibility. Our recommendation is to have a system that levels the playing field and, and provides uh, an acceptable venue where we can bring SDRs into uh, the fold, if you will. We've got the a database. We, they were, we're looking at uh, whether you know the health and safety issues are addressed and everything. We're trying to move forward on STRs. The special use permit, if, if the town wants to initiate that to all STRs, they so should. So here, they've already initiated. Okay. You know, an early, earlier discussion was that it, <coughs> is your office, for example, prepared for an onslaught of whatever, 150, 170. 170. At least 170. Yeah. At least 170, 170 applications for special permit use through the, to get these people up to legal standards. Are you, are you prepared for this? Yeah, but, or, or no, it's a valid question. It's, it's, it's only, it's, no, it's going to be a bubble. Yeah. It's going to be a bubble. You guys keep going around and around over the same thing and you're getting nowhere. I mean, all you keep saying is licensing and special permit. If somebody else needs a special permit. I'd, like to, 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 to that's that's question, that's I'd yeah. like to hear how he's answered that to Mark's question, Hank. I'd like to hear how he's answered Mark's question. It's a perfectly valid question. I think we're making very good progress. Can you answer the question? Repeat the question, please. Do, do you want to have 170 <coughs> known not STRs? At, not at one time, but uh, it's going to be a bubble. It's not going to, maybe in the beginning it's a bubble. So 150 people want to apply. And as, as time plays out, it might be two or three people a month. Okay. It's not going to be 500 people charging the office. So, so here's, here's, yes, my, here's yes. my the answer is yes. So here's my point. If the town wants, because it's in the regulations, mm -hmm. that should be pursued if the town wants to pursue it. Mm -hmm. What we're recommending, we don't know how long that's going to take your office. We just want to get started on regulations that make sense for the town. <coughs> so Sam smartly said, why don't we have a licensing process where we can get started, get people registered, get them online, and then you if you want to one by one. James, I don't agree with that. Okay. He's okay. essentially so, streamlining the yeah. special permit. Yeah. So, so you don't so, agree, but yeah. so let's go around the room and, and hear from other people. But Kevin, what do you think? I'll start with me thinking. Okay, <laughs> he's thinking. What do you think? Well, no, I, to me, we, we all said license instead of special use permit. 
and we came a lot with a, we came up with a lot of requirements. I've got them right here for what it would include inspection. It would require fees. It would be renewed annually. Um, that oh, it wasn't us. just a you want a license, we give it to you. It, there were going to be requirements, and the reason it was presented, and at the time, I think, well, at the time we thought all of us, but now people have changed their mind. Um, that it was a good idea was that it would be an undue burden on the town to process, it's gonna be closer to 200 right away, so we thought, well, how can we make it easier on the town? If, however, how we feel is we currently have the capacity to process 170, 200 special use permits instantly, quickly, rapidly, in a, in a month or two, quickly, yeah, then, instantly. well, that, this put, that, that's my next question, my follow-up thought, this is all very, off the top of my head, this is new, but going back to something in a different way. Yep. Um, and I think you're right. It's going to be a bubble, then it's going to taper off. I do think you're right there. People but come in now and apply for If they came in right now, if the word went out right now, hurry up, everybody, go apply, and go get your special use permit. Um, how long does it take for one person, if one person comes yes, in? The process is there's a workshop meeting come in with your proposal, whatever it may be. And then there's an official meeting <coughs> once a month. And uh, for a special use permit, you have to apply for a public hearing. And there's a public hearing. Right. Um, well, you there's no reason why you couldn't do a public hearing that involves 25 people. That okay, that's good. Time. You could do a bulk yes or no. Yes. Okay. And that's okay. The planning this is, that's okay. what I'm getting for, too. How, how, the planning planning board. how quickly could we how do we deal with those that when you get an onslaught and you get a backlog, are we just saying we're going to have um, a grace period until we get through all the applications? Can't, can't, you, mm -hmm. can't you give them so many days to come in and register? No, I wonder how many, go through the process how many, many days does the town, town need process. to get through sure. 200 yeah. special yeah. use permits? How, That's how, how long would it take the town to would process? Would it matter if they come in and register? and the town knows exactly where they are, so we know what we're dealing with. If they come in and register, and you give them 30 days or 45 days to register, and then you go through the process of making them legal? I mean, that's what they're right. Is that, that, that such a bad thing to do? Do you feel that's doable? Well, probably I'd be overwhelmed in the beginning. Well, we had this discussion <laughs> before, and said I would be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And we all so. agreed that there weren't the resources currently in the budget to hire but more people for the building department. Well, and that got into the licensing fee. That could the be fee paid for it, yes. For. So we've had this discussion. And for what it's worth, you guys know this, and you know it, we had this discussion in the first committee, and the consensus, even from the supervisor, was that we should go towards the licensing. So that's why I'm confused now. That's why I'm thinking about it. I get what you guys are saying, mm -hmm. but we were trying not to, for lack of a better term, gunk up the works. Mm -hmm. That's what we, yeah. And I, I, I understand it's frustrating. We want to stick to the code, and we're not. I think we're on the same page. We're not throwing out the code. We're trying right. to adopt the code and make this modern and streamlined and efficient. But if you think, I'm asking you, if you think that the town can handle the burden, the planning board, the zoning board, and you, mm -hmm. then we can do that. But. This is a funny discussion. So no, but that's also, that's also only half the equation. There's the burden on the person. Right. They're gonna come to a workshop, then they're gonna get their letters, then they're gonna come back for a public hearing, mm -hmm. then they're gonna come back for a vote. What, well, like, we we I didn't off. finish speaking. No. Right. So that's a burden of what, 60 days minimum on the person, as opposed to going for a license? Two months. Two months is 60 days. So I think it's important. It's not just the burden on, I'll wait till they finish. Already heard from you, and I think that um, you guys, you guys are missing the big picture. It's not just a special permit. You keep, you know, you laugh. Right? I, it, you know, you're convinced we are all special, wrong all the time. No, 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 no. I think we're all no, no, trying no, to work no, together. No, 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 Liz, Liz, Liz. Liz the, special, the special permit isn't just so you come and go before all of these committees and fill out an application. The special permit is because you're operating a business in a residential area and your neighbors have a right to know what you're doing with that house if you're not going to live there and rent it out we're as all, a hotel. All and right they, have, we'll they have a right that. to come to this town meeting hall and voice their either objection or, or, or their approval. And that's what the planning board and everybody looks at. 
you know, 200 feet out of the property line. They have a right to come in. They get no notices by certified letter. And that's what a special permit is all about. Not so you could just operate a business. I, I don't think no one, we, no one, no one, no one, understand no one disagrees with that. And we're not saying that you, if the town wants to pursue and ask every business in town that doesn't have a special permit to apply one, that they should. Do you know of any would, businesses that don't have one? Then maybe you should talk to Howie and he'll, uh, he'll cite them. Hey, I said maybe there is some, I would venture, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But my point is, what we're suggesting is by the licensing process, is we can go ahead, get started, database the people, license them, get a permit, and then if you want to do the town issues in a statement tomorrow morning, okay, everybody who's uh, an SDR or a business should needs to apply for a special use permit, okay? Then everybody is under an obligation to go ahead and pursue that and to <coughs> complete that process. So I have a two-part part process. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, so, so, but what the licensing does is enable us to in, set up regulations for consistency, for health and safety, for issues like parking, for, so everybody knows, so you know, you can go to the town and see <coughs> who's all, who has a license for, for an SDR. You can see that, and you can see that the SDR has said that we're going to park on our property, that we're going to take care of garbage, that we're not going to do noise, that, et cetera. The licensing does the same thing what this SDR committee wants to regulate. The town, if it wants to push the, the special use thing, it should. It should, and we're, and we're not trying to dodge it or saying we shouldn't do it or whatever, but there's 170 SDRs now or more in business doing things. We're not gonna shut them down till the, S, till the special use, it's been going on for years. There's no sense in shutting them down till they can, and you, I don't think you wanna do that either. So let you do your, let the town do its process. If they wanna do special use, you should do that. But what we're saying is very simply, let's move forward with the licensing process so we can set up a database, get the fees, and get started with simple regulations to manage SDRs in the town. The two can happen concurrently. Yeah, they can. Now, Hank's point is that uh, the, 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 the absence of the licensing process is that uh, it doesn't give people an opportunity to, uh, to oppose the mm -hmm. license. Right. You, right. You're right. establishing a commercial business in a residential neighborhood. I think the neighbors have a right to be notified. They do. Yeah. Well, yeah. they could be all part of a licensing process. Mm -hmm. So, but, well, but if, if, and I'm sorry, just because I, okay. I, I feel we're straight a little bit from what we said before. Yes, you the, were speaking. I, I believe the licensing was was not the, our intention. From I just reread the minute notes again from that meeting, um, that it was not intended to be get a license and then get a special use permit. Get both. We're going to hit you up for fees two times. I don't think that was the goal. It was not. I believe the goal was actually a, a licensing process that is a process that would be, as you said, quicker and more efficient than the special use permit. I think we all felt, as uh, now about fact, someone just said at that point, we, we don't want to shut them all down. We, we need to protect the town. Uh, that includes the, the neighbors and the STR operators. We need to find a way to, to balance all that. Yes, it was done without permits they should have had. That's why we're here. We had that discussion. Exactly, so I mean, and yes, I mean, we, we do have to go back and have this discussion again. Um, there, is, I believe it would be an undue burden on the town, on all of the committees, the planning, zoning, and building, and the STR owners, to have to all of a sudden right now scramble and go through the special use permits for businesses that we have knowingly, openly allowed to operate in this town for decades and now, like, you know, they did it without the special use permit. Well, you know what, nobody said anything. Not everybody knows all the codes. Sure, it's ignorance of the law is no excuse, but here we are. How are we going to make them legal and regulate them as quickly, as painlessly for everyone as possible. And licensing and special use permitting is not the quickest and most well, painless way to do this. No, yeah, yeah. Let, you know, you know, let's others. continue one more on the table. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say? No, I think that, that's my piece on that so far. Okay. Now, if you're feeling unwell and you want to leave, do you want to be the next to speak? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you keep saying that 
we haven't discussed special permits, and we haven't discussed this. And that. No, no, we have. No, we have. Last, I did we have. Last, 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 no, but you're wrong. Did, so, okay, I'm always so, wrong. But let, listen, but last wrong meeting, in this case. just yes. last meeting, did you read what I presented? Yes, I read, read it out loud in the meeting. You read it. What did the statement say on the top? The statement said that, as far as I'm concerned, that SDRs that are operating in this town without a special permit are operating illegally because they didn't check it with the zoning uh, board or, <coughs> I just said or the zoning oh, officer. Yeah. To operate and that they should be if found out that they're operating illegally because we had no addresses we don't know where they are and if they should be immediately shut down until they provide the right, proper documentation to operate i remember you and now that. I mean, now we, we have a list okay. we have a list addresses yes. and names and we still disagree with that okay. so we just got this yes but we still disagree with the statement well maybe you we do. don't well exactly we, we disagree everybody with disagrees with does anybody here think we should now go through this list and shut down all the SDRs? Is that anybody's feeling at the table? No, no. Listen, that's no. just a statement I made. I'm not saying to shut them down, but I'm, I'm trying to make a point. And the point is, is that you can't keep circumventing the code book. We you know what he's trying to do. We agree with that. And wait for a moment, and keep telling you, no one is trying you to circumvent. You are. You, you want are a two, $25 no. license, and you why, want to why buy, buy, Why buy, okay, they're already operating, right? Yeah. Okay. No They're not according to code. That no. that situation exists. Why, why don't they come in and apply for a special use permit? Because because they weren't aware that they were. They weren't aware. So it's now fine. We have this huge it's bubble. It's fine so for the town. It's fine right. for the town. The town should do what it wants to do with spe with with special permit. If the town wants to say to all 170 or other businesses in town, the anybody town has who is not. already said in this vote if, that if you have an accessory. Board, Department, uh, you I, have to apply for a but, but there's but there's a situation that that is now in play. For years, people have not well, been we doing have to that. Address. And and we we're, no one right. no one no one at the majority of this committee is has said over and over again we're not trying to work around that or avoid it. If if, if you know okay James. Let somebody else talk. I have well, a let, let me read my statement so I can go. I mean really okay. you special guys will discuss permit. As it's written in the code book now, does that address the person who's a live-in STR renter? That's just inviting someone in to share a room? What's a, rent a, room? What's a special uh, permit you know, issue? It goes with the property. So once you, you I say... Okay, yeah, okay, that's 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 you, this discussion started with accessory building or right. apartment. So does it also include the person who owns a home and decides to rent it for a weekend? It's just that building. It's not an accessory building. Or renting one or bedroom renting an apartment. while they're still there. Yeah. yeah. That's so open. once again, we have all these different configurations and business models that are trying to form an umbrella. Okay, one at a time. You were off your chest. So does it address, Listen, include hit. those? Uh, Hank is I'm speaking. I'm I'm sure. Sure. No, he, 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 he asked a question. He's, Ralph is speaking, he asked, how we approach it, how he's answering. So what you're asking me is if someone decides to rent a house out for a month. And a month, a weekend. Yeah. There's no regulation stopping them. So, so right they, now, they wouldn't need, they wouldn't need a So that use. doesn't really fall under this but accessory permit. Yeah, well you're changing a single family household into a multi-family household by. No, but if you're not making it multi-family. Like say, you're putting a new, look, you're putting a bedroom on. No, not adding a bedroom. We're not adding anything. I, let's just say that you know um, uh, somebody owns uh, a two-bedroom house, mm -hmm. and they live there alone. One person, and there are a lot of these in town. This is what Hank mentioned that I looked up online before the meeting. There are a lot of STRs that you can find on Airbnb right now mm -hmm. where it's someone who lives in the house full-time but rents one of their bedrooms out. I think so they're 68. not adding a bedroom, they're not adding the kitchen, they're not dividing the house into multiple units. You walk through the front door of the house, just like you live there, use the same bathroom, the same kitchen, same living room, but you rent a bedroom in the house. And you said 68% of the rentals. I found, I found 68 of them. Oh, 68. In, not it's not hard to get exact <laughs> counts, but within a, an no, area okay. similar to the town of Shandagan, I found 68 of them. So the question is, do they need a special use permit? Do they need a special use permit? Yeah. Well, um, right now, probably not. Okay. And if you rent, so you also said that if I take my full house and I'm going to go away for a month, 
Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm going to go away one week every month out of the whole year. And I want to rent it that week that I'm not there. I'm not changing the house. I'm not adding anything. I'm not dividing it. Again, I believe the current regulations say I would not need a special use permit. I'm not sure I follow all of that. No, um, somebody's writing out. Hold on. Okay. Like, oh, so let's say there, there is. There's one in town. And actually, now I don't want to use a specific example just in case. But I know of some, a, a couple who bought a house up here uh, within the last few years, uh, four or five years ago, I believe. Uh, and it is a one or two bedroom house. They come up during the week mm -hmm. and live in it during the week mm -hmm. and rent it out through a VRBO or home away mm -hmm. on the weekends. Now there, they have not added a bedroom, they've not made it a multifamily, they've not mm -hmm. added anything on, they've done no construction, mm -hmm. that they need a special use permit to rent it out when they're not there. Well, they've changed the use though. So, we, so that, that we talked about at the beginning, it becomes a change of use, mm -hmm. but renting a room while you are there is not a change of use? Well, I don't know that I can interpret that, but I can yeah, say yes. Okay. Yeah. What changed? What changed? Use-wise, what came? It went from well, residential. You said change of use, what changed? Well, because now you have a single family residence, and now you, you're renting it out. So you've turned it into a commercial business. People slept in bedrooms before, they slept in the bedrooms afterwards. The only difference I see is somebody else has a key, and they're paying. On a, on a daily basis. I mean, I, it's, it's the payment. Well, hang on, hang on. The payment is a difference. Let's do the difference because if, if um, uh, I know somebody else who moved, they own a two bedroom house in Shandaken, uh and they have moved, but think they might be moving back in a few years, so they didn't sell their house, so they were renting it out to someone who's now living there. That person's living there all the time. It's a long term. term. It's a but term. they're collecting money. Howie said the difference is you're now collecting money, which makes it a commercial business. So therefore, if you rent your house out to someone, that's a commercial business. <coughs> but that's what this is about. It's got to be about getting the wording right. It is all about words and semantics because that's the definition and that's what we need to figure I think, out. I think that's what the code does. Personally, it's about somebody that buys a house with no intention of living in it and rents the house on a daily basis or, or, or a bi-daily basis or a weekly basis. Uh, anything less than 30 days. 30 days and more if you rent it for a month, a season, um, a year is different. But when you specifically target a property, knowing that you're not gonna live there, as some of these real estate agencies are doing and some of these LLCs, I see them all over here, LLC, LLC, LLC. They're buying the houses. LLC doesn't mean they don't live there. No, I know, yeah. I know, I know. But they're buying the houses, and but they're just for the I was trying to address person. Howie's answer when Sam asked, what's the change of use? The change of use was, now you're collecting money. And well, that, any house rented in the town of Shandaken, whether it's full, but that wasn't the answer. The answer wasn't, now you're collecting money for a short-term rental, because there's no such thing as a short-term rental in our codes. Do you need a special permit for a long-term rental? If I want to rent my house out, I don't go to Portugal. Like for people who have apartments. No. And and remember our definition. We specifically yeah. uh, specified long-term. We said non-permanent. Non-permanent. Mm -hmm. Any non-permanent. Non-permanent would be covered by what we were trying to come up with. So what we are trying to come up with would cover every one of the examples I just proposed. But what's currently in the code? Well, we we don't have it covered because. The answer of, well, you're collecting money, that's anybody who rents a house or an apartment in the town of Chandaken. But that's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. So there is still work to, to clarify this. Mm -hmm. I think it, anybody has a right to rent their house out. You can't take that out. Agreed. Fundamental property right. Mm -hmm. And Agreed. too often it seems to me that, you know, and I think it's wrong to create onerous regulations because we feel somebody shouldn't make a buck off their property. That has no place in this conversation. Fundamental property right, and if the only difference is they're getting paid for that bedroom that they would have, they, they could might have slept in until they graduated. I, 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 it to me that is an onerous provision. It should not be. It should not be a zoning issue. It should not be a planning issue. It should be a licensing issue. And we got plenty of rules to make sure that people don't abuse <coughs> the quality of life. And we can put regulations so that every house doesn't become. Uh, an STR, and I understand with the whole issue of what do you do in a hamlet 
when you have a concentration of these, well, we gotta think about that. But this community is an historic community for tourism. It's a community that uh, doesn't need bureaucracy. And we need economic growth. And the licensing makes everything easier. Not everybody needs economic growth. I think some most people, the some people, like myself, moved here to get away from economic growth in places like Long Island. And I, I mean, we'll, we'll, but we'll never be like Long Island. We know that 80% of the land you can't develop here is, you know, we know that's right. not going to happen. We can change our neighborhoods dramatically by all of a sudden everybody's in the STR business. That's, for me, that's... We, well, that's we, a future discussion. We've yeah. had, you've suggested uh, multi-tiered or two-tiered. Oh, we've talked about a cap as well. We've talked about a lot of things yeah. Yeah. to try uh, and address the fact that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. And all are possible with licensing. But I, I really do feel that arguing for special permit is really a way of saying, I want to make it as difficult as possible for somebody to open it's an SDR. And I think that same, that is, I, I, I just think that that is wrong in a town like Shandake. I think that's, I, I don't think that's a fair statement. Because, I'm just the impression because, I get. Because the neighbor of uh, the house that you want to buy and rent on a daily basis has rights too. He has property rights and he moved into that neighborhood because it's a residential neighborhood and he wanted to raise a family there. If he wanted to move into a neighborhood with hotels and Bed and breakfasts, he would have moved into the Hamlet in a commercial Hamlet zone or a commercial zone where there would be a, a hotel next to it. And, and, I, I, mean, and, I, get and I don't know how you can justify How do you stop the world from turning? I mean, you things mean, change. That's yeah. why there's zoning rules, though. It's not stopping the world from turning. What it's doing is protecting the integrity of a neighborhood, of a community. That's why there's zoning. There would be no zoning if everybody just got along and everybody did what they wanted to do and they didn't bother their neighbor. But because of all of those issues that cropped up through 100 years, they come up with a book and they put zoning regulations in there to protect all the residents of the town or the community uh, in, in each way. Meaning sure. that you can't, it, you can't do something with your home to interfere with your neighbor's home. There's even lighting things in, in the zoning books that says that the lighting can't reflect across your property yeah. line into your, uh, and no, your neighbors have. I mean, STR all of those and things are there and to make your quality of life better. And, and, that's, all, and that's all enforceable, even if you have, even if you regulate it through licensing. That's all enforceable. Which isn't often enforced, by the way. That's yeah. not enforceable. Which is another issue of enforcement. We have so, so, so I, I just want to say that I thought this particular meeting, <coughs> what our homework was, was to kind of come up with all the overlapping issues that are in a zoning book and get rid of them right away so then you can get to the regulating and all the stuff we're talking about now because we didn't do anything with any of the issues other than parking. But, we are, yeah, but, but, but I think this, this we are focusing on this issue because Howie and you have one point of view, and I think the rest of the committee is either thinking about it or it's, oh, look, I'm gonna repeat myself, very sh short. We're not trying to avoid anything. If the town says to me, I should apply for a special use, I'll go in tomorrow and do it. Well, why don't you? And then you would avoid the big bubble. Because, because, we're, because we're there are 170 to... people that have not done it, and I want, and, and, and we ask a couple of questions of Howie, and Howie said, I'm not exactly sure, and stuff. So there's, a, and, and Mark said there's a lot of configurations. It's why not let the special use process take place organically? Have meetings, let's discuss it, let's configurations, so let's start the process. I'm not saying, I, I, I agree with who Sam. Gives that the license out? Huh? Who gives the license out in your office? The clerk's office. Town clerk. Town clerk. Yeah, town clerk. It's contingent on well, inspection, so it's still contingent on you. Yeah. But that license would have to involve an inspection. Yeah, yeah. Make sure yeah. We yeah. Talk about talking about a site so plan. <laughs> how do I do 250 inspections? That's what we're asking you. <laughs> so, so, you just so it's all, no matter what you say, it's still going to take. It's still going to be a bubble. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to have to. We're trying to that. minimize the bubble. But yeah. do we want a six-month bubble or do we want how well, two months? This, 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 could this could easily take. This could easily take a year. Yeah. I mean the process. So what we're saying is let's get a simple licensing place that's not onerous, get people on board, get it regulated so we standardize and create an environment which is semi-legal. Now if in meanwhile people are gonna have to be patient because 
I'm only one person. I exactly. And so, yeah, so, so when I hire saying, somebody on a short-term basis to help out, that wouldn't be a big problem. Right. But and maybe still, I'm going to have to go out and do 150 yeah. inspections. So exactly. Yeah, so, that's, so what I'm saying is if we license to a license or a special use permit, I still have to go out and do 150 inspections. I, I agree. So what we're saying is let's license it, let's get the system up and running and working, let's know who they are, know where the addresses are, and let the town proceed. You know, if Rob Stanley issues a thing in, in on the town website that says anybody who is this, we're, we're going to start this process, step up and start doing it, then, then we'll do it. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm resisting it. I understand the code book says that. There's 200 people that are not doing it. If you want to do it, do it. That's fine. But what we're saying simply is let's license and move on and regulate and make for a safe and healthy environment for the town. And many, I would say the majority of town, I don't know, probably agrees that SDRs are good for the economic welfare of the town. And I know some people up here who are retired who want to live in the woods by themselves maybe might be frustrated that there's STRs on their, on their block, but it's a town decision. We're just trying to come up with a way to standardize STRs. <coughs> so I, I okay. think STRs are pretty standardized now. You guys know what you're doing. I mean, you got no, what, what, you have to no, relative to the town. Okay. What relative to the town. So, well, so okay. Can we move on with, a, can we vote on licensing? And, and I don't think that's, that's not, we're, we're not here to vote on licensing now. We were here to go through the regular. Well, I wouldn't mind that vote because I don't want to have this conversation again. I thought we were beyond this two months ago. Yeah, I did too. Well, and secondly, I'm perfectly prepared to go through the other issues vis a vis zoning board, but we got sidetracked in the discussion. So first of all, we haven't heard from everybody about licensing versus special permit or one-way permit. What do you think? Well, my question, that I asked Howie about whether it applied to all the various forms of, of <coughs> SDRs were covered by that. So since they since they are are covered by what? By the special use they're not. They're not. not. We they're determined not that one earlier earlier earlier. And Howie just confirmed that. If you've got a yurt in your backyard, if you've got a glamping operation. No word, you know, glamping didn't exist when this was written. There's a lot that's so, not covered by the code which is why we want to get a commercial license to catch okay. all those people that are going to fall through the crack if we just go special use out of this business. It sounds like yeah, the town no, It seemed like the licensing to me was a more straightforward way to get started and simplified way to get started. So mm -hmm. I would yeah, in favor of, of as days, we yeah. discussed that. Okay, do you have anything else to say? Um, only that the one, of the, I, one of the advantages I believe of licensing is that when you take the license, you are going to be representing that you are going to follow certain rules. Just like when I get the license to put my kayak on to be packed, and I'm representing that I will have it steam clean. I'm not going to take it from one body of water to another body of water. And nobody has to check until the day that I'm on the lake and the DEP comes over and they ask. And they, I say, yeah, it's been done. They look at my sticker and they say, okay, you're all right. So the nice thing about licensing is that you can have a lag between the license and the inspection because the person is representing at the time that they're taking out the license that they're going to follow the rules. And if they don't, you can take it away. And if they don't, there's all they can and have they trouble it. with their insurance. Yes. They would not be recoverable. And that implies they're, they're, they're at risk. And that applies to enforcement procedures, which mm -hmm. you would then need to put in place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was thinking, well, over the holiday, one of the things what might help make the committee is what are going to be our deliverables to the town? And yeah. so our deliverables would be an application form and then a SDR guide, which could address various issues having to do with special use and all that. You know, that, sp sp that handbook should be, we need to draft that relative to, you know, what the regulations are, because not everything is going to be in the, uh, in the thing. And then I like the idea that we came up with last time that every SDR should have a little square plaque, whatever, that has mm -hmm. basic roles for the guests mm -hmm. to be responsible for, like, you know, know where the property lines are on this, you can't have loud noise, you can't, sh you know, shine lights into your neighbor, whatever that plaque says. Mm -hmm. So those should be our three deliverables. So And recommend the changes to the zones. Yeah. So vis-a-vis the, -vis the legality. Uh, like STR definition, STR permitted use and where. Those are changes. 
because it's not defined right now, it's not permitted use anywhere. Right. But we can make those, we can recommend those changes. So the basic question facing us is how, how do we achieve that via licensing or via the special permit process? So we had this discussion, if you guys want to look it up in the, in the minutes, uh, three or four meetings ago, I, I thought the consensus was that we were looking through a licensing process to uh, legitimize everybody doing this, but that there was an enforcement procedure to make sure everybody was following the regs that we are about to put in place, which I was hoping we could move on to for the right. next step of what we're doing here. So, on November 11th, is uh, when the meeting on November 11th, November 11th. is, uh, and it was uh, Mark, Sam, Ralph, Hank, James, myself, and Krista. <coughs> uh, Howie and Kevin were not here. Um, it was the consensus, according to the minutes, that have been voted on and accepted, that we would propose a license over the special use permit. That was the consensus reached at the meeting. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we formally adopt that and take a vote on it. Do I have a second? Is there any second? Please, please, no. So, please state the motion. I move that we make a recommendation for a licensing process as opposed to special use permitting for STRs in the town of Shandy. We have a second from James. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? You guys have a zone. Of course. We got two SDR members here. We no, two, uh, two. no. We've got one, two, one SDR down. person. We've got one here. I'm a totally independent person. Uh, I don't have any skin in the game. Yeah, I know, but you know. Uh, but not everybody's going to agree with everything you do. Not everybody is going to agree with everything these people do. So it's a committee. Well, so. I, I just think it's unfair that the. Uh, you know, the, the residents of this town, and I say it again, the silent majority, I mean, it seems like I'm the only resident here uh, from the town that isn't renting an SDR other than the committee people, the planning board, the zoning board, and the zoning officer, and the board member, and, and the other four represent hotel lodging industry and the SDR industry. Oh, so and you take the number of SDRs and the number of hotels and lodges, as opposed to the number of houses in the town were sorely misrepresented on this committee. And, uh, and, and I, I really feel like, opinion. I, I feel that no matter what I say or anybody <coughs> else says, or he says, and he's the zoning officer, that if we take a vote, you're just gonna vote to take the easy way out because you don't wanna inconvenience anybody. You wanna make it easy for you to get a $25 license and become legal. You don't care whether your neighbors uh, hey, agree hey, with you or not. Talk about what you what, what you believe. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm not putting them in your mouth. Yes, you do. Yes, I'm, you are. The, uh, the, that was. It. I'm just repeating what you okay. said at the end of the and, table. And I just want to pay a twenty-five dollar license. Thing that you said three of the people are citizens of this town that do not have a resident business, and and three are in in, in you. So you're represented on the committee. We've gone over this numerous times in this meeting as well. It, the committee is what it is. Let's move forward, Hank. Well, I'm trying to. But when we when we sat here, sat down here, we were supposed. To, and what is that supposed That's to? It's for future reference because we're, yeah, we're all starting. all starting yelling. Yeah, yeah, give it to me. I'll gavel every time. Yeah, sure you will. But um, okay, one at a time. This, this meeting today was supposed to be, and and we started off by trying to get rid of all the overlapping issues, and we didn't yeah. even do that. And then you're talking about licenses again. Go straight to it. Why can't you just get rid of all the stuff that we don't have to talk about? Then talk about regulation, but you don't want to do that. Please, I personally think that if we went to the special permit process, that was the easiest thing we could do. Just turn it over to the planning board. That's not what we were charged with to, to, to organize this committee. Does anybody else feel that way? We just want to right. turn it over to the, to the zoning board. Do you want to continue with trying to figure out a legal, reasonable, Simple. Easy licensing process that would eventually lead to legitimization, legalization, and standardization. And standardization, pursuing the four things we set out to pursue: the economy of the, of the community, the character of the community, the safety of the community, and observation of personal property rights. Mm -hmm. Isn't the zoning board going to be the ones deciding yeah. whether they adopt this licensing process over the town board? Town board. The town board, board. Town board. The town board is going to decide whether they're going to adopt well, the they license would have over the meeting. Over this yeah. 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 They'll call for public meeting and yeah. public comment. And then it's so be what we're discussing here about this 
doesn't really carry that much weight right now. It carries the weight of recommendation. Right. That's what we're here for. That we're here okay. asked to do to provide a recommendation for how to legitimize and legalize, conceptualize, yes, but quantify. It, it's a sticking point that we're spending a lot of time on, which ultimately isn't going to come down to what we think about it. It's going to come down to what the thing or what yeah, think yeah. about it. Well, no, no, no. We'll come down to the town board. The planning, town board, board, I mean the town board. planning board can't change the zoning law. The zoning board of appeals can interpret, but we can't change it. Only people that can change will be down by resolution. That's my understanding. Does the planning board have to recommend to the town board? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, so what would our be opinion be? might get solicited once a recommendation yeah. comes. So what we're doing is going straight to the town board. That's my understanding. Yeah. That's why Brock Stanley is. This is, this is not a creature of the planning board, it's a creature of the town supervisor, as I understand, speaking yeah. for the town board. <coughs> <coughs> yes, so maybe, mm -hmm. Certainly the planning board and the ZBA will probably discuss it. Sure. I would hope so, yeah. yeah. Sure, but uh, ultimately it's the town board, yeah. Okay, so we, um, for, let's no, go I back think, to the I think this licensing issue is, a, is probably the biggest part that they themselves will have to figure out and decide upon. And all the other regulations that we come up with are more supplementary to this big part. So I think we should work on those and let this big part be settled. But what would your recommendation to the town board be then? Well, I, I recommended the licensing because I think it's simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can make the decision to say, hey, no, and I'm sure you'll have an input there and say, hey, we could do this through a strict observation of the zone code. They decide to do that. Mm -hmm. That's their purview. Mm -hmm. We are not adjudicators. So let's come up with an application. Yes. Well, we have, we have mock ones. James came up with an James application. Do you guys want to continue this I, process? Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Um, since we've lost an hour already, and we have a meeting scheduled for maybe next week or the week after. Two weeks. Can we, are, we're all, it seems like we are now all on the same page since we voted on what the committee as a whole, the direction we want to move for our, our recommendation. Can we, as individuals, come up with things what we want to see as regulations and contingencies, by contingencies I mean letters to the neighbors, things like that, and then come to the next meeting knowing that that's what we're doing so that when we try to talk about parking, we don't start screaming at each other? I thought that's what we were doing last meeting. <laughs> and here's the contingency we came up with. Parking, garbage, noise, uh, access for help if needed, uh, the safety of the renter, and the licensing. And that was clearly delineated in, in that. Um, in in so. support of Kevin's suggestion, uh, perhaps instead of reading through what you've got, which I don't think is the best use of everyone's time to have you just read to well, us. There's not much to read about because there's not much in here. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe if it's so. short, then let's let's just uh, uh, can we just acknowledge what <coughs> our concerns are addressed. Already? Well, well, we talked about parking, and I said... Parking is definitely so one. Garbage, we know, so and noise. Put you in there, and we're going to have to so, so distill so this. It goes back where we started. So we're going to go, because we're right now putting special use in advance. We're, are we going to go with the code for parking? Yeah, I don't think. Here's what the code says. Boarding or rooming house or similar use is one per guest room plus required space for the single family to dwell. Everybody agrees that would apply to SDRs, correct? Everyone agrees on that? I like it. And the way it's written, because we've, we've encountered before where the codes don't seem to be written to apply to SDRs, but since it says for similar use, mm -hmm. I think that means it applies. So one for the house, and then one for every SDR. Well, it depends on the house. I mean, a, the code says two for the house. Two. For the single family. Oh, two for the four house. Four for the house if it's a multiple. And then okay. one for every room, every bed, bedroom. <coughs> so one for a single family or two for a single family? Two for a single family. Two. And then plus one for each bedroom. That's um, I, was, I was going to suggest, I'm going to parse this, maybe I'm wrong, but I was going to suggest one additional parking space. The reason being um, that if the, an emergency vehicle or if the guests come, 
or if there has to be a police action, there's a space for them to park. The other thing is, and this is something we have to do with the zoning board, if there's a if if there's a variance from uh, an accessory uh, unit to uh, a side border that's say 18 feet, and somebody uh, wants to come by and reduce that to 10 feet, but if that's the only venue through which an emergency or an EMS vehicle or a fire suppression vehicle can get through the property to a, a, a even if it's an accessory structure in the back of that property, then if that zoning, if, if that area variance closes off the accessibility to, um, to emergency vehicles, which may be necessary for fire suppression or health, we have to ask that landowner, how do you intend to get an emergency vehicle back to your that house in the back of your property that your 94 year old grandmother is living in that you've taken to use ambulance service? And if they can't answer <coughs> that, we can't supply mm -hmm. that variance. So I'm thinking for the case of safety, do we ask for one additional parking space? Now, in the Hamlet areas like Phoenicia, so parking space, oh, by the way, parking space is, um, uh, is 12 feet. Um, it's uh, in the, the zone goes uh, nine feet wide by 20 feet long. So that uh, the 20 feet seems kind of excessive. Maybe that could just be a space we pull off into your own lawn from, from, your, from your, um, your driveway. But so what, to pull up on the lawn? On the lawn, okay. that parking space could be your lawn. I was wondering about that. Yeah. So, for safety reasons, I mean, you, you've had more experience than me. Should we ask for one additional parking space? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, when a, when a, how many times is a police or an ambulance or a health vehicle going to need to, in Chandigarh, where there's not a lot of traffic, needs to pull off and park so the hordes of cars can go by? Are you denying it never happens? <laughs> no, I'm not denying it's it never life. happens. It's one life. I okay. mean, but, but so if there's two, three cars on that, you know, let's say somebody's got a red bone in the back. Yeah. I, I would think that the owner of the property says, why don't I move my car into the garage or off yeah. and let the ambulance in? Yeah. I mean, to, but, to, but, but there there a lot of people, if you're in right. town, if you're in town, you only have one drive, there's your limited yeah. space to all of a sudden create another space yeah. for something that happens on, could happen, I'm not denying it could happen, mm -hmm. but I'm saying, I think there's ways if there's multiple parking spots, that somebody could move their vehicle to provide access for the person. I mean, that so, not necessarily always happens in emergency situations. So I'm just asking this for yeah. yourself. I, I think this is one of the things too, because I'm, I'm running through some of the ones that I know and wondering, I'm not sure how many units and how many bedrooms are in all of them, but uh, especially within the various hamlets, um, that would be a, that would kill certain, several, maybe not a lot, but several okay. existing. So. Well, I, I think that's a valid need that we would want to <coughs> incorporate for any new businesses. Do we, do we, and this is something we'll have to circle back to later, I think, do we want to look at a way that exceptions can be made through like a, a special for grandfathering in existing ones? Um, is there going to be anything, any, any venue where someone can come say, okay, I don't have that yeah. extra spot, but please come look, I think we can work it out and where you can get a special approval. Probably the zoning board. That would be a zoning board thing, right? So there, there will yeah. be an appeals process. It could get really complicated. It could, right? So what if you got the pre-1974 house mm -hmm. that does not have uh, parking that would meet today's zoning? Like in Wilkinson, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking specifically of some in downtown of Wilkinson. And, and we, you know, how would they may not, where do you park? Yeah. Well, and then there may, may be no Wall Street parking. Right, so then you can't have an SPR. But is that what we want for the town? I think we can make that. Uh, you know, one for every bedroom, one parking space for every bedroom. Uh, that's easy, simple. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's not something I think we should vote on now, I just think we should, you know. Well, one, it's one for for you. Yeah. I think it would be a good call for every bedroom. For safety, but yeah. I don't think it's feasible. Is it for, I'm, I'm just, I just yeah. point of clarity, is it one for every bedroom in that dwelling or for every bedroom uses an SDR? Right. Right. Well, 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 this is, if you're renting out your entire house as an STR, please correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe the existing code says, regardless of the number of bedrooms, if it's a single family home, you need two parking spaces. Yes. If you have an accessory building, 
um, you're going to need another parking spot for every bedroom in that accessory building. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if that, if that house out and back, why that can't you just out and back has one bedroom, then you do need three parking spots according to Why can't you just leave the parking the way it is? It no, that's, I was reading it the way it was. Yeah. That is that's exactly what she said. Yeah, just leave it the way it is. Why does it got to be changed? I mean, but you know, the house is still a house. You know, it's on a piece of property. No, I wasn't suggesting a change. I was reading yeah. it as it was. The reason it might have <coughs> changed is because there may be situations where people rent out one bedroom and then eight people plow into the well, house. Well, it happens so. anyway. It happens now. Yeah, so we need to leave. Well, and that comes, that's where we come back to the other, we're doing parking spaces by number of bedrooms, and yet we all know there are SDRs that have a rented occupancy rate way above the number of bedrooms. But and that well, will become well, an I think that's interesting issue. That's something that, that's that we're going to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, I think we, let's move on and not bring that. <laughs> this could be the important order. thing is not to, not to have the SDR community uh, have rules applied to the SDR community don't apply to the normal community. I mean, Agreed. I, I Agreed. It's, they're, all, yeah. they're all here together. I mean, we just yeah. want it to, to be, you know, livable for both parties, but you can't yeah. put rules on the SDR community because well, number one, it's unenforceable, and number two is they'll take you to court. I mean, I, I don't get it. Yeah. I just, you know, parking is parking, and as long as you abide by the zoning for the particular type of structure, there should be no problem. All right. I think and, and people do have parties in their houses, Families come over, they, they have 10 cars sometimes. I mean, I mean that does happen. And it doesn't happen on every single day basis. Yeah, but the normal people just you know, have I mean, <laughs> that happens. So yeah. I, I don't think parking is such a, you know, a big issue for us. Okay, so we have a rare moment of agreement here. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, garbage, I could, there's almost nothing in the zone code. You said you found something that I didn't find. No, I mean, in, the, in, in the zoning, it talks about littering. Talks about littering, yeah, which is not. It talks about house garbage. It, it talks about a house receptacle. But, uh, you know, property I, I, maintenance. I code. put in. So I you said to add them, so I just reread. Yeah. I, I put garbage and I put add to page 88 3 zoning code book. House garbage receptacles must be removed from the street in all districts within 24 hours after pickup. And uh, if left in driveway or front yard, must be housed in some sort of enclosure. That's, that's what I think should be in it for the, the littering. It was actually in, in this page 83 now. No. Yeah. Okay. And that's, right. that's what I put. That's that's so cool. And I thought, I think that's really good. Actually. I mean, and, and that's if you want to add that part. But if it's added to the code, that applies to everybody. Yeah, yeah because, because the zoning code. Though, yeah, right? it's not in the code. Yeah. The zoning code book really doesn't specifically address so house so garbage cans. And you know, because they really didn't have a problem with before because you know, the, we didn't have garbage pickups. Yeah. So, uh, what would you, so what would you think about uh, if they're right. on your street, they need to be in the... Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, a, it's, a it's, 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 it's just really a number. I mean, nobody's out there with a time clock. It's just to, so people know that they can't leave their garbage cans out at the street all week. Right. You know, in other words, after the garbage is picked up, at some point the next day or so, they bring it up. Yeah, pretty much everybody it. does that battle. They leave the cans they out. They leave it right on the street. I mean, people are lazy. There's two, there's two issues, neighborhood character and uh, keeping the critters away, especially mm -hmm. the bears. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, that's I, I thought that be, was fair. Yeah. I think it's going to be up to an individual post with, like uh, James is saying, with each you know placard with information that people are going to have to be made aware of the garbage yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. But if you're taking out the license, you're going you're gonna to represent that you're going to honor that. Yeah. Yeah. This is on the owner, not the renter, I would say. Yes. Yeah, all the yeah. are on the owner. Yeah. 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 And then, um, and so if it's a, an enclosure, it could be a, like a they have to have a, yeah. have a yeah. property yeah. manager that's going to do that right. for them. And then I went on to noise. The noise, okay. noise next to noise. Those are the rules. Those well, are the rules. The noise is another issue that we have, like noise, you mm -hmm. know, parties and this and that. <coughs> In the zoning book, it's already addressed. It's uh, addressed on page 116-57. Uh, no, that's it. 116, yeah, 55. 55. Uh, residential zones, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's 57 DBAs, that's decimals, weighted uh, decimals. And then it, R5, R3, R1 and a half, and uh, HR zones is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And it's 53 DBAs, so it's even less in a, in a residential. And how much is the property line, right? Yes. 
And in Hampshire, the commercial zones, it's, it's more. It's seven to nine in commercial zones with 64 DBAs, but that's already in there. So it's addressed. So well, how much is 60 DBAs? I, mean, I put an example here. Here's an example. A vacuum cleaner, a house vacuum cleaner is 75 DBAs. So I think I one mean, of those, which it seems, one of those all small ones never leaks back. back. No, I know, but I'm like around 59 yeah. 60. Yeah. The only, yeah. the only yeah. thing with the, the decimals is that they're really hard to measure. Yeah, you need to measure it. I mean, you can't. So, so basically, the cops, like, you talk to Chad, he says, why isn't there anything about nighttime noise? That's the classic, isn't it? Well, because there's supposed to be no noise other than what it is. It has to be low. Nighttime noise has to be low these levels after 7 p.m. Well, it says that somewhere? Yeah, on, uh, yeah. that's a red number 116-23 in the zone. 116-23, mm -hmm. he has 116-55. Yeah. So no, that's a page number. Yeah, page number. Okay. Yeah, but you don't correspond, so it's, it's red number 116-23. <coughs> but, okay, oh, oh, by the way, there's an addendum to that. For any source of sound, which makes a pure tone, a discrete tone, or a pulsive sound, don't do like reggae music. Uh, the maximum sound limit set forth above shall be reduced by five hours. I think I think every chainsaw at Shindake is illegal. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think my generator is illegal. Every power tool, every generator, your car. Uh, I think it's Thank God my neighbors know that. Like this, this the wheels, wheels, yeah. rods, yeah. Bone mowers, every and I was using so mine yesterday. It was 64 degrees. Yeah. So is this a case where we want to rewrite the zoning code up? Yeah. But this is this is an example of another one that's a good application. Applies to everybody. Why yeah. Not to an yeah. 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 I mean, you don't. Again, you don't want SDRs to be burdened with something that everybody else is burdened with in the town. It should be equal for everybody. That's the way I look at it. And I think. Yeah. If you kind of agree, with agree because I, I, I thought there was something that said uh, like uh, eight o'clock or nine o'clock. It's seven p.m. Seven. Seven a.m. So so if somebody wants to have it, uh, if my neighbor has a party and goes till eight nine or ten o'clock to play music. I guess all the cops technically. I guess if it was really so if it was disturbing you, yes. If they're over you were over the top of it, I mean. depending on which zone you're in, if they are over fifty-three DBA. So does that does, 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 does the police yes. officers in town have Actually, a uh they do. Do they? Yeah. 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 Okay. But I was just explaining to Hank, it's hard especially here the sound carries different in forests yeah. and in mountains, so it's hard to quantify because by the time you're actually getting it, you have to be pretty much at the house, and they don't do that. They don't sneak around and look and take <laughs> decibel readings. So, so it's kind of a hard, hard situation to actually enforce. But as anybody who's had a noise complaint, I, I definitely been part of a noise complaint. Yeah. Yeah. That Which side too? Football. <laughs> <laughs> what was the noise? The, the, uh, but was, was that the we uh, have a very we have a very friendly police department. Yeah. They go, they tell you to be quiet, and yeah. you know I think if it's a repeat offender or a repeat offense, it definitely can yeah. come back on the license and be that first strike. Or, you know, so, so 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 do we want to put do we want to put in the handbook that if neighbors complain yeah. with the local police and then we'd have to have the town police or somebody who, who's going to investigate the noise who would know that they would have to enter it into the database that there was an yeah, infraction that this person yeah, is you know, SDR some, some, or some, home. some neighbors are paying in the neck. And it's true. I mean, if you farm over there in the other house, they're going to call the police. I mean, every opportunity they could get to call the police on you, they would do it. I mean, I've seen it happen. Please know that too. They know yeah. where to call things. I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier on in the few uh, book uh, housekeeping issues. I called uh, the Chief of Police, uh, Chad Story, and because there's some controversy here about how much impact that the, the uh, SDRs are having on law enforcement. And I asked him to come and speak to us and give us uh, the horse's mouth. He said he couldn't make it for this meeting. He's going to try to make it for next yeah, week. Good. But he said, frankly, what I'm going to tell you is. I'm not a good uh, determinant of this because we don't ask the question when when we do a response. We don't ask the question are you an SDR or a tour? Right. So he doesn't didn't really know that, but he felt that the the, uh, the amount of uh, requests and responses was not up, or he, he didn't see any serious impact. But that he basically was unable to give us that information because I don't know if they're not allowed to, or they just don't have the policy. Don't ask are you an SDR rentor or is this an yeah. SDR rental property? So we will be hearing from him next meeting when we can ask him this question about noise. He's probably going to say, no, we don't walk around like... Well, what, are, what, are this, what is he there for? Why is he at the house? 
What is the reason for the complaint? If it's a noise, let's ask them that. Well, if it's a noise complaint, what do you do? They get a call, they go right to your house, it's in their little book that they keep, you know, their daily planner. Keep a daily log. Yeah, they keep a daily log. I know, but they call and what it's all about. Come to my house, they seem to like know who the owner is. Well, they know they want to know. Yeah, but they want. That's to me like a standard operating procedure. Are you the owner of the house? Is the owner of the house here? Something like that. You don't just go somewhere and start talking to people you don't know. I'm repeating what I had the conversation to me. It doesn't make sense. So, so we'll ask him next week. So, or maybe he should start asking that question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I responded by me to nine one one calls. They want to know. Who, who am I? Who called? You know, uh, stuff like that. This brings up an interesting point. If, uh, exactly, I think they should, and if they don't, and, and they don't, and um, we've just said, it's been said a number of times, that the license is after X number of strikes, for whether it's the garbage can or police complaints. Is that viable? Is well, the police department going to start tracking whether no, there are no, calls no, the from the STR? And I'm picking up a lot. Yeah. It may be it may be a part of the process, and I don't know if it would be under your department or a separate department who would do it. But it would seem that, that the, somebody would take the police report and say, "Okay, here's the address. Oh, I checked it on the database. It's it's an SDR." And somebody would have to connect the dots to to make to make mm -hmm. it a formal violation. And then I would think if if it was one neighbor that complained. It, that that owner, property owner, whether it's an SDR or a property owner, has the right to go to a couple of other neighbors and say, hey, you know, we had a com noise complaint where you bothered by it because you can have a neighbor who, like you say, parts <coughs> and that, that seems like a big burden to place on the yeah, police department. No, the well, police. well, no, it wouldn't be on the police department. But well, no, it has to because that's who's going to get the call. That's who's going to respond yeah, to it. I, that's going to determine. I, I, again, I don't the think problem. it should be treated any differently yeah. than the normal house call. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but the, but the question is, how do you know all that through down to, is their license in trouble because the police have been calling right. there? Yeah, yeah, that's the only difference. Yeah, they, they would know that so I'm asking, that I'm asking a property. Maybe not the same people there, but they would know that they were called to that property like six times last month or, you know, two times this week. I mean, if they have it in their little log book. And I was so told three hours ago by Chief story that uh, they would not be able to give us that information yeah. because they don't, they they don't have the data. Yeah, so but we'd be asking them to do something they do not currently in do. A, in a situation like and this, then follow up on it. and Did not, they? sorry, but like in a normal situation, if there was a noise complaint and they came and they said, you know, keep it down, and then they get it again an hour later, keep it down, and they get it again an hour later, then it becomes an issue and we go three to four times. Mm. What happens is they file a report. So somebody is being ask questions at some point if yeah. there's a formal report being written and I don't think it's out of the question to say, you know, because like you said, are you the owner of the house? No, I'm from out of town, but probably would be the response. Right? It's it's not too far out of the question to say, are you renting in a, a short term rent? Are you with Airbnb or whatever? But only in the case that there was a report written. You know, I I would think that would be a logical step anyway. And, and then, but I think talking to Chief Story, this is going back to last year when we started. Because he said the same thing, he kind of laughed and said, "We don't have data. We don't ask those kind of questions." I also think those aren't, as far as incidents in town, those are not top of the list. Noise complaints usually get squashed after the first, first yeah, couple. Once police mm -hmm. coverage is right. quiet down. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'd be useful to ask him to ask that question so he can give us that information. But, but yeah, I mean, we're not going to be able. To no, that was just a curious. I didn't really just think that was going to. I think it's, out, it's kind of a non-issue because it's in the book. Yeah, and it's something we shouldn't be dealing. With. It's there. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question for Chad, but I agree with Hank that I think yeah. what's in what's in the book is yeah. fine. Right. We're not going to do it. One of the other rank up the desk. One of the other issues that you said was safety, so that was like my first one on my list. I put safety, and, and I put uh, operate with the same rules and regulations currently required for hotel, motel, B and uh, you know that they would need a certificate of compliance, which. You know, every home probably has a certificate of compliance. You think you would have a seal. So if you had a certificate, well, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that you yeah. think they would have. 
Right. And, and he's yeah. anyone before 1974. 74 would. Yeah. Yeah. But if, you know, he would then inspect those houses and, and see if they comply with uh, smoke detectors, uh, well, you know, and all, you know, fire extinguishers, stuff like that. We could require that STRs have one, though, regardless of the... Get a CO if you're going to run an STR? Have one. Pre-74, yeah. a certificate of so, so, uh, CO. You, you need one anyway if yeah, you're yeah. in any kind of office. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think... Well, no, so they just said, if, if you're living in your house, and it was built before 1974, and it has not gone, undergone any major construction, mm -hmm. yeah. you do not have a CO. No, so I think what Ralph is proposing is that if you're gonna start running as an SDR, you've yes. got to get a CFO. Yeah, well, you know, it's that's that's a fair point. Okay. Yeah. I think I think it's yeah. only it's it's fair, it's safe for the people that are renting, so and, and it actually licensing. protects the whole yeah. part of the licensing for okay. the insurance purposes of the house. Yeah. So I think is there so. an issue with doing that from your standpoint? Well, he has an issue. <laughs> um, how are we treating? Are we treating treating this wow. as a? If you, if you have a, a, a room in your house that you're renting out, are you still just a single family home? Or are you a business? And it's two different codes. If you're a single family yeah. house, the fire safety uh, code book doesn't, doesn't hold up. But once you become commercial, then you, you've stepped into a different zone and there's a whole book that's the, telling you what you have to have in terms of Fire extinguisher, emergency lighting, exit signs, path of uh, yeah, ingress, handicap, ingress, handicapped access, handicap access. I mean, you may ask every STR to build a no, no. no. See, getting a CFO in order to get the CFO, uh, uh, correct me, Howie, means you have to meet all the current requirements. Which means if your staircase is too narrow, <laughs> mm -hmm. which means if your staircase is too steep. And I know there are no farmhouses around here that have steep, narrow staircases. So there's a lot of things that I think would fall under our we don't want to place an undue burden. Right. So yeah. there has to be some reasonable way to meet the safety requirement other than you need to get a CMO. That's, that's why I think, to Howie's point, I think we're considering it just a, another <coughs> form of residence, not yeah. a business. Yeah. Because one of, the, one of the versions of a single family home is you don't have to apply, you don't have to comply with the ADA. You can have steps to your home, not a ramp. So, so if but we- At the same time, Ulster County wants an occupancy tax, which is a tax for a business. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a tax for- Yeah, yeah, for a business. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess it would be, yeah. But, as well uh, as a debt tax, right? But if you sell something out of your home that you make, the picture frame example, somebody said before, well, the state, the county, everybody wants sales tax on that, but your home is not a commercial space. It's a home-based business. Okay, you got to ask question. So, what? yeah. No, I was finished. Go ahead. Okay. Um, should we ask STRs in town, for example, if you're not uh, handicap compliant because you don't have a CFO, uh, maybe we should say that in the person should say that in their listing. Don't you do that anyway? Or no. You, you can check it off if you that. are on a Airbnb. Yeah, you can check it off. Yeah, if you, 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 right. you are, uh, but, so then it's assumed that you're not, unless you check it that you are. A thought back to uh, the idea of making them get a C of O. I mean, my business is since the 1900s. They haven't made me change my stairs, yeah. but they've made me put fire alarms in and fire extinguishers and well, some of the water testing. That so that some of the things yeah. they make you change and some of them they let you grandfather in. So mm -hmm. it's not like a blanket thing, you gotta tear your stairs out. There's you know, a separate code book for existing buildings. Right. Oh, perfect, yeah. okay, good. Who uh, manages that, the county building center? No, I don't have any code book. It's a combination somehow, actually. It's a county. Well, so the county only you know, cares, you know, again, if you, you have, have a fire inspection done by Howie. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you're less than 11 units, it's just Howie. If you're 11 or more, it's Howie and the county. Okay. But you, you won't be 11 units, will you? No. Ten so and three quarters, right? <laughs> anyway, I <laughs> so so uh, 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 if, I, if I dare draw a parallel to the our discussion about
about special use versus licensing. Uh, well, if you want to. If we, if in our safety handbook and, and, and or the application form, I think we should say, do you have carbon monoxide? Do you have this? Do you have a checklist of, of those things that will satisfy both an insurance company, the owner, and the renters that that property is safe, that list. And again, if the town wants to uh, come and do inspections or whatever, I think that should be encouraged. You know, it's not a big it, to do that. But again, you could do that as you have the availability of your time and, and whether, if, however, you want to manage that. At least, again, from a regulations point of view, we have a core set of safety items that's on our checklist. I think it should be required. Actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't think there'd be any disagreement with any of that, you right? You can get the license. So, so what it would be, uh, be inspected. so a, a smoke detector, whatever, car, smoke, carbon monoxide, uh, fire extinguisher, uh, fire extinguisher, and an evacuation plan that's clearly posted. Um, I'm saying a smoke alarm in every bedroom, a fire extinguisher on every floor, a CO2 alarm on every floor, every occupied floor. Okay, okay, okay. Can you send you that? Uh, that's supposed to be one outside every bedroom. That's already code, yeah. isn't it? The number so of smoke detectors. So we should meet. One in every bedroom, one in every floor. We yeah. should meet. Is that in the code? Yeah. No? Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. state code. So we should meet the code. Is that what fire is? State fire code. Yeah. For smoking and CO2 detectors, we should just we yeah. should meet the code. Okay. Yeah. So that's not hard. You're saying that's smoke simple. and carbon monoxide. Get together. Smoke detector in every bedroom. And there's no batteries anymore. You're saying it's a state code. Yeah. National code. Yeah, national. As well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's covered. So carbon you know monoxide, <laughs> if there's a source of carbon monoxide, if you have an electric water heater and oh, yeah, you, know, yeah. you just uh -huh. don't need to have it. Uh -huh. But smoke detectors, one in every bedroom, one on every floor. Okay. And what, what about hallways and stairways? I think the hallway would, would be accomplished by having one on each floor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think the code requires one outside of each bedroom, right? Oh, one outside. in every bedroom. In, 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 in every bedroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And an additional one on the floor, which would mean for well, most homes that fits in the hallway. The in the atrium. Okay, that's right. Yeah. On each floor. Got it. So nobody okay. feels that the fire extinguisher should be inspected like they are at. I think they should. Licensed. Yeah. And does that get into how often the license needs to be, be issued? And that gets into an inspection issue. Mm -hmm. So uh, didn't you say a fire extinguisher wears out after a year? I think it's a yearly inspection. It's a yearly, it doesn't wear out, but in a rental situation like mine, someone has to come and inspect it and tag okay. it as up okay. to snuff every can, can, year. Can you take them to a place that have an inspector to tag? Probably at the place in uh, They'll come right to next you. to uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bart's place in Kingston. Yeah, we discovered last time a little bit further. They have to go to what they charge. Right? Wasn't one of them? No, I don't know. Yeah, I one mean, of you guys was paying more than the other one. That just seems weird. That, to me. Yeah, but it, that came up at the last meeting. That, yeah, that they someone was charging less in Woodstock. Yeah, yeah but they were charging uh, less for an inspection in Woodstock, Woodstock than they were charging here. It was for me, fifty-five bucks for that piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I agree with you. Yes, how much do they cost? For one extinguisher. Like 50 you pay $55 too? Probably. I mean, I don't pay attention to it because I have like Somebody 24 did. fire extinguishers yeah, yeah. and it's like a hundred and something dollars for all, all of it. So it's a site visit, not site extinguisher cost. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, the per extinguisher cost is, I don't know, it's three minimum bucks or four yeah. bucks or something. Yeah. To me, this is an important issue because it rids of a lot of environmental suppression. Oh, yeah. I'm guilty of this. I got a fire extinguisher for the city here for five years. So, so it um, may be good. You can just look at the dial. Uh, so is okay. I don't have not to test it. I don't have to so score so it. we have the dial. So if there would be an annual uh, renewal of the license, you'd have to show that you're that and, and and I'm thinking out loud here. So say there's an annual renewal, and part of it is you have to come in with some sort of yeah, way of stating that your fire extinguisher has been updated. Maybe so the, the guy comes and take a camera and so take a picture of it or whatever, and, you know, and that has to be there before they or, or a receipt, yeah, or a receipt, something that you would that would be part of your renewal. 
Because that's the only way you're going to get those final signatures inspected, is if you attach it to the renewal license pledge. If, yeah. if you want to have some assurance so that that home is safe for five Do you, you feel that's important? Yeah, I do. What's that? I mean, yeah, that's a fire extinguisher certified once a year. And that's, that would be something that would be picked up by the inspection that we're all proposing that I think it sounds like we're all proposing it should be an annual inspection uh, for licensing if you're going to inspect <laughs> fire extinguishers. <laughs> Someone from the town is the coming to make sure that is, is well, that the, the, your understanding? Because I, I, it was not my understanding. My understanding single was single family homes are exempt. Yeah. But we're saying for STRs they they for wouldn't STRs, be. STRs. Yeah. Because I just asked Ralph, I'm sorry, I did a little side question. How how does he prove to the town, the county, that his fire extinguisher has been inspected, which I believe is coincidentally what you guys were just yeah, yeah. talking about. And he said, Well I don't, they come inspect. Right. So, so it, that's the way the county handles it. And in fact, uh, do you inspect his fire extinguishers or does someone from the fire department? Who does the county do? As part of my fire safety, I would look on the tag and make sure. Yeah. And but but are, are, are we, if are we, we have to get the fire extinguisher certified, tested, whatever, uh, every year, is Howie going to go, or the person we hire to help Howie, going to go every year? Our SDR is going to be time that they do the, Whatever time that they do the inspection, <coughs> they'll look for the extinguisher, they'll look at the tag, and they'll say, okay, this has been up to date. It's yes, but good. that means it's an annual inspection, inspection by the town of all the SDRs right. to do that. If you want. That's, that's, that's what I'm asking. I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend that, and let me tell you why. I think it would be great. I think it's undue burden on the town. A, it's B, a lot. Yeah, if, 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 when you sign the license, you are saying, and there should be a little code, a little mouse type on bottom that says, "With your signature, you are this. You are legally saying you right. have said all this is correct. If not, you are going to be sued." And if some idiot wants to sign that when when their fire extinguishers are not current, I mean, it could be a potential disaster. It's a big issue, <coughs> but but I, I I would not have any annual inspection. In a whole, no, no, this is not to say that how he can't come at any time. The, the license is going to have to all expire at once. No, it'd be a well, they, they, they would. You know, it's not like one day everybody's license expires. Yeah, no, it'd be it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a, a bubble no matter what. You, you know, were talking about twenty standard. inspections a month. Yeah, whatever. No matter that's, how, that's how that's a lot. I just well, uh, the I just place of assembly requires uh, annual inspection. Yeah. So well, SDR well, would, would qualify for that, right? No, not necessarily. No. Well, like necessarily like a restaurant, restaurant uh, yeah. movie theater, okay. like that. After so I, I was wondering if we could alleviate the burden by having about a <coughs> two-year bi biannual inspection. Yeah. But that would not ensure the viability of your fire extinguisher. Well, how do we feel about James' no, suggestion that it, in signing for your license, uh, you're acknowledging, yes, my fire extinguishers have been inspected. Yeah, I mean, that's a good starting point, you know. It's kind of like you agree to the terms and conditions of this and yeah. you put the X every yeah. time and you read. You could do that. We that's, could all, do that. that's the only part you read. And it could be random inspections. And that was where I was going to go. Oh, you know, right. and also part of the submitting so color license is that uh, I acknowledge that the town of Shandaken has the right to come and inspect uh, at, at their convenience. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah so maybe it's once a year, maybe it's once yeah, every five right. years. You may not get well, yeah. that. But the right. random spot check can well, keep people well, on their sites. Yeah, that's one of the. Things. It's like a check maybe every year. Who knows? It's That's one of the things that I have mentioned in the in the information I gave out is that it's gonna be really challenging to do inspections in all of these part time rentals because you're gonna to want to inspect the owners there, there or what the managers there and not when it's rented to a guest. To line up with an owner or manager as opposed to a business where it's generally open nine to five or whatever and then the inspector can you know up the county inspectors don't call me and say, hey, can I come yeah. look in your refrigerator today? They just knock on the door and walk in. Yeah. You know, we'll have to read this after the meeting. I can't absorb all this now. <laughs> all, all, all this are material. No, no, no. You know, so maybe the every other year thing is, is a good idea because it, it lessens the chance that, a, I mean, a fire extinguisher generally doesn't go bad in a year. You know, so if you're there every other year, it's a pretty good chance that 
you know, everything is going to be okay. But I mean, after a couple of years, if the same number of inspections per year still almost, it will average out. So I like the the, the random spot mm -hmm. you pointed out. Yeah, and maybe yeah, because of the nature of the business, as you pointed out, it's going to be random, but you're going to get a, a notice in the mail that you're going to have an ins you need to schedule an inspection in the next, like yeah. the assessor, when your property gets assessed, the assessor sends you a letter and says, uh, we're going to inspect your home, please contact us, you must schedule an appointment in the next three weeks. Okay. That, I really like that. It's still going to keep on top of people, but it allows the flexibility, that you, the uniqueness of the business. No one's going to want the inspection done while the guests are there. Mm -hmm. The owner's going to want to be there or have their manager there. The importance to this is to have a mechanism in place to, yeah. uh, uh, to obviate any um, liability of the town. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Kelly? As far as inspection goes, I mean, it's going to fall on your department, whether it's yeah. you personally or someone that helps you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think every two years works for me. I mean, and if there's a licensing fee. Initially, there's going to be an inspection. So if I don't see a fire extinguisher in the house, they're not going to get a license, right? I mean, that's right. And so it's been two years. Oh, you were just going to say what I was just going to say. What? what? The, the yeah. fee, we talked about it before, having yeah. a licensing fee in place can help hire someone yeah. to do the inspection. Yeah, I thought we were going in the direction of um, encouraging people to have a company come in, and they would come in once a year. Oh, yeah. To to tag the, the, the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's but, why I asked him, then, so the company comes in and tags my fire extinguisher, did they give me a certificate <coughs> that I can give to the town? They put a tag line on the extinguisher. See, but that's just it, and you're not supposed to take a tag off and send it into the town. That's yeah, right. so the town has to come see it, Correct. so it's required. still the town doing inspection. And I don't, can we tell the fire extinguisher inspection companies that you know what, in the town of Shandaken, we'd like you to uh, tag the fire extinguisher and sign a piece of paper saying you inspected X number of extinguishers that the owner can take to the town. Can we have it um, take a uh, snapshot with this smartphone and send it the email with the tag? I mean, so is there a, that's actually what so I was wondering if they do something along those lines. Is that, you can take I don't know if it's realistic. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it, I think a piece of paper signed by the same people we trust their initials on a card, can we trust the inspection companies we could on a piece of paper that gets mailed in? The town could provide that, that blank receipt. Yeah. yeah. When they just fill out it, to sign this. It, 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 that that would alleviate that a bit. Please complete this and sign it. a picture of the bill, I guess, yeah. or the statement, invoice, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I don't know if that, I don't know what information is on that. Does it say X number of fire extinguishers at this address past inspection? We can no. create that. Yeah. yeah. This is mine. I, I, I think the idea of uh, something like that is on there. You don't think I can need that anymore? <laughs> I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to block the wood. You can hit me on the head with that. Right? <laughs> I like you. I like you. Everybody likes you. Yeah, at, some point, at some point, we might want to get the advice of an attorney, only because the more that you ask for, then the more that you're taking on liability yeah. as a town. Whereas if, if the licensee has to make a representation that they're doing this, and then you limit it to spot checks, even if it's you know once every three years, then I, I think you're taking on less potential liability as okay. a town. And but putting it on not the owner. Another uh, piece of That's product. right, keep it on the owner. That's who should be liable. And, and it's because it's in their best interest anyway. And I think most short-term rental platforms will require air conditioning, uh, fire extinguishers. And if you don't do that, and you're tagged for it, you could, you could be thrown off the platform as well. So okay. there's an incentive. Another point of business that you brought up earlier is that I, I sent an email to Rob, I, I called him the day before I had to work, uh, asked him about how we can get legal advice and if we okay. can access a town attorney to attend these meetings. But before we do that, we're going to want to get all our legal advice so we know. Get all your eggs in the basket when he comes yeah. and review everything. Uh, These guys are what, 350 an hour? 500 an hour? The, the town attorney? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, so we don't want to waste the town's money. So, 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 we, well, it, so. We, can, we can send a copy. Yeah. 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 We don't have yeah. yeah. to well, That's a good point. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Okay. But anyway, I'm trying to get Rob to organize any kind of legal advice. Mm -hmm. so, I can do these spots. Can, can I draw our attention to the clock? And mm -hmm. think that uh, this is kind of a natural juncture. I would respectfully submit that uh, I'm tired and would like to go home. Did you feel that well? Yes. Who hasn't got here? I'm, not, I'm the one that's actually uh, 
But, yeah. uh, can, well, thanks for hanging. Can I just go through just two more of these real quick? Because it's nothing really, it's, it's just other things. There's the lighting. You know, the lighting might be an issue, you know, somebody's having a party, there's lights all over the place. It shows. <coughs> it's already it's already also, addressed in the book. Also and if you read my thing, it's already addressed in the book, and it says that the lighting mm -hmm. can't, you know, actually interfere with some shine on somebody's house. And, and if that's the case, that they should get some vegetation or some uh, lighting guards, you know, or right. shields to stop that. So it's already in the book, so you don't have mm -hmm. to deal with it. And smoke and odor and dust is already in the book. And that's addressed to on page 116-55. Uh, and it's the same as light. It has the property uh, a lot more. You know, so even if you have a commit to burn, the smoke is supposed to go straight up. If it's a windy day and it's, you know, and it's wrapping around somebody's house, the book addresses it. And I just put in like uh, issues of consideration and uh, you know the federal state disabilities act. Uh, I, I also put in that the zoning uh, definition should be put in the book, and I, I put a you know on page one sixteen dash thirty it should be inserted uh, right at the setback and before signs. There's those are paragraphs that we've yeah. I didn't know what's supposed to be. said that you know the town has a liability uh, of these short-term rentals right now they're not inspected and the town knows that they're operating and uh, they don't have any place to operate and if somebody gets hurt that catastrophically you know somebody dies pulling off a, a bulky uh, railing to a railing or something like that or out a window um, the town is liable because they know that they're operating and they know that they don't have a commit they've got them inspected and you know willing to sue anybody believe me so that's another issue that the town's got to look at when you put all of this stuff together. It's an important issue, I think. Yeah, so having just been through this, I, I recognize that this represents a lot of, a lot of research I was based on you had. So, so I, I'd like to go through page, your page two in a little bit more extensive, because again, I think it's 10 o'clock and we've been here for two hours. I, I don't know. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, I wonder how to go. I, I wanted to just present this and go. <laughs> And we, we can discuss it next time. Yeah, we can discuss it next time. So yeah, next time we'll do that. But I want to remind you before we uh, leave and conclude the uh, meeting, we need to hear from any public public comment if you want. Do you have any questions? We're not ready for that. We're oh, going to make sure sorry. we can finish the meeting. So, <laughs> so first of all, what is what is the takeaway for the next meeting, which is uh, uh, January 27th? You're going to talk so, about regulation. Yeah, I think so. I think we need to. Yeah, yeah, so kick the can down the road forever. Well, we have kicked it down the road yeah, quite a ways. And I think we need to Fisher Cafe. I think we need to specify. I mean, that's part of kicking it back up the road. Yeah, yeah let's make it the alliteration. mandatory that we don't <laughs> talk about yeah. permitting. <laughs> Pardon? We'll make it mandatory that we don't talk about permitting to start with. And we just continue where we are. Well, one of the things, as everybody knows, that you're not going to make everybody happy. It's you know forgiven. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's a given thing. It's, you know, if somebody's going to be unhappy. You just got to do the best you can with what you have to work with, and try and keep all the residents of the town uh, safe and comfortable. I mean, there's no reason why somebody should be uncomfortable if they're surrounded by SDRs. And that's really my biggest concern because some of these small, where I live, I looked at the list here. Half of them aren't even on, and I half of them, uh, half of the houses around where I live. Uh, in this list, the ones that are listed, there's only half of them listed. The other half aren't listed. Oh, the other half that are Airbnb. Yeah, that are they're on the list. The list. Yeah, oh. they're not on the list. They're not Midland okay. Valley Road. The, the whole bunch of them that aren't on the list yeah, either. So, I mean, the list is showing 167. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so we know we have climbing numbers. Yeah. We, we know. We know. I mean, we just don't know how. But it, it's not the committee. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. the committee's responsibility to track the rest of them down. No, no, but I mean, yeah. to regulate, we should know what we're regulating and, yeah. and the vastness of it. I mean, you know, yeah. if you regulate I based on the 150 in the town on the 4,000, sometimes you, know, you want to get a handle on it, right? You don't yeah. want, yeah. You don't want yeah. 60 or 70 percent falling in the line having 30 percent. I, I, my my question was specifically with the SDR, is that our responsibility as a committee? 
committee. I don't think to so. determine how well, many are well, no. no, I think if we have some thoughts on how we can find them, find them or, yeah. or, or yeah, we'll get them. But we can just say, I think we've all said before that we probably only have half of them listed. Yes. Hank just said it again. That's <laughs> 170 on a certain list. Let's double that to 340. Yeah. That's 12% of the 2,666 houses in the town yeah. of Shandake. And then, then you got to look at the purpose. Are you doubling it? Uh, because we've all just said doubling. Then you got to look at the location. Everybody just keeps saying we, we probably only know half. So I'm just saying, even if it is worst case, we only have half of them on the list. We're still at only 12 percent of the houses in the town of Shandaken. Does anybody okay. actually know anybody who's doing illegally. this illegally? That's who it was. Illegally. Illegally. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Everybody. <laughs> I know a whole bunch of them. You mean flying under the radar doing it? Yeah. Um, so 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 no. everybody I know that is doing it is is on. Uh, Airbnb, Airbnb, or VRBO, or Homeway, which is why it really wouldn't be that difficult to hey, make this list if someone just sorry. popped on those websites and wrote well, it Well, the county was supposed to be doing yeah. that, and that's well, supposed to be reflected in Have you found the places that you say aren't on that list? Yeah, on, I know they on, are, yeah. No, no, no. On websites? Are they on? No, they, they don't. They rent them. They don't rent them. They rent them like every weekend. No, but uh, uh, week, have you checked if they're in the number? I understand that, but have you checked if they are listed on like Airbnb or someplace? No, else? no. I, I just this is what the county gave me. They have a research uh, company out west somewhere that's no, researching yeah. all of these. Right. What do they call it? Home away. And the the, the rental platforms. Yeah. So they're trying yeah. to get whatever uh, they they search the sites to find. But it's them. not the owner's fault. The sites. company out west didn't find yeah, it. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. that's. Well, sometimes it is. There are people. No, but what I'm I mean, if, if people are really trying to do it, they're also they're really going to be. How are they we want to make a uh, recommendation that somebody is, who is operating a SDR after these regulations are enforced, so we want to make part of our statement that if uh, you are determined to be running an SDR without licensing, that there's you will be shut down and you won't yeah. be able to continue. Yeah, I think that should be one of the you know, four or yeah. six yeah. months or a year. You drive a car without a license, you get a fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I assume that's a given, right? That's a given. And that ensures that everybody that comes to this community to rent knows that they're in a safe space. Yeah. Yeah. So, we can decide, so, so we can decide what that punitive thing would be and make that as a recommendation. Yeah. I think that's what you were saying. Let's make a recommendation. Well, also, on this list, I found out that a lot of, a, not a lot, but quite a few that are on this list. The address is a post office box in Phoenicia. They don't live here. And I know it for a fact. But it doesn't mean that they don't live here. They don't, they don't live here. They, they, they don't live here at all. I know. They live in my neighborhood. They live in New but Jersey. You live you don't know exactly. They, they're they're friends of mine. I know where they are. Okay. They don't live here at all. They just rent it out. But and they, they get a post office. they use the place? No, they never use it. They oh. get a post And they, some of them own two or three places. <laughs> they get a post office box in town, and their mail goes to the post office. So I have to ask again, I would make a suggestion that we're ending the meeting and we're going into a discussion now about post offices. Are we going to... What is the takeaway from the meeting? Yeah. Huh? Okay, what is the takeaway from the next meeting? The, my takeaway from the next meeting is that we continue to go through the different everybody's issues list and move towards codifying them with, uh, and we should make a designation, okay, what are we saying? Is it on the application form or is it in the handbook? And, and is it on the third deliverable, what's gonna go up in the room? Everything that we codify, we ultimately, I don't wanna go through it all twice. I don't so let's, have an so let's say, is it on the application, <coughs> yes, no? Is it in the handbook, yes, no? Is it on the placard, yes, mm -hmm. no? And everything that we come up with, should we should do that right away. Because otherwise, we're gonna to have to go back over everything that we discussed. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, so the time is to finalize um, what, which regulations and what do we protect. Yeah. Right? What is, what is the licensing process? Let's start defining it. And, uh, and uh, James gave, it, gave us a good start on that. With the, does everybody have that yes. document that you sent around? Uh, yes. 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 Issues we're regulating and how we're being regulated. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay, now before we close the meeting, Miss, do you have anything to say? Hi, guys. And please I'm introduce Roberta. yourself. I'm Roberta. Um, I deal with a ton of local STRs. I've grown up here since I was born. Um, and I would just say that during about the safety issues where you're talking about the smoke alarms, carbon dioxide, fire extinguisher, and exit plan, I think it was mentioned in one of the other meetings, but the little yellow
yellow safety card that the town puts out should also be listed in every STR. There is a little yellow safety card. I'm not aware it of that. It lists all the emergency phone numbers. Oh, yes. Give me a little bit. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. 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 I think that's a very There's a bunch of them downstairs. Yes. I put them in all, a lot of the STRs that I yeah, personally deal with, but I think that should be something that is mandated. Yeah. 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 You say you deal with STRs in what, in what capacity? I own a cleaning company and a management property company that deals with STRs in Ulster and Green County. Okay, how many properties do you manage? 50. Okay. So then, is, is there some restriction that you're working under that you're aware of that if there's a, are you the contact person yes. if there's an emergency? Yes. And what is your time, how, how soon do you have to get to a property? <coughs> is there some restriction you have for? No, honestly, I've had, I've been doing this for six years and I've had two emergency phone calls and both were because the customer couldn't get their key in the door unlocked. Okay. There's never been an emergency. Okay. And I'm, for at all those 50 customers, I'm the emergency contact. I'm who gets called if the homeowner isn't around or blah, 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 blah. I've so, had two phone calls. So do you operate in, in uh, Hunter Township, for example? Yeah. And uh, is there an SGR committee or do they have SGR rights in Hunter? Or is no, there there's one nothing one? in Hunter. There's nothing in Wyndham. They're doing one right now. They're talking about it. They're all talking about it and they're all looking to us for guidance. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they do have a committee that Hunter. Hunter yeah, does have a committee now. Gotcha. I think we're exceptional. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, anything else? No, that was it. I just think that card is important to have. Yeah, yeah that's it's a wonderful good. suggestion. Yeah, yeah, I see what that says. Yeah. It's a good card. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything else to say? May I have a motion to close the meeting? Uh, I'd, I'd like to apologize if I uh, hurt anybody's feelings or said something that, you know, particularly somebody that I mean, I really, I'm not feeling well, and that's not an excuse, but I. Uh, that's going to happen. It's an emotional thing. We're all going well, to say things. Well, to me, you know, like, no, it's, um, you we're know, all going to be passionate that. about. You know, saving the quality, you know, the quality of life of the neighborhood. Uh, I appreciate your passion. I, I appreciate your apology. Is anybody actually standing? Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to keep it civil. That's all the yeah. yeah, you always want to keep it civil. You, you young guys, the old guys, always keep it civil. <laughs> yeah. The old yeah, hotel, well, like, all right, motion we have a motion. <coughs> please don't throw it. I'm the wager. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.